What's up everybody? It's Alex and RJ here from Backyard Sprouts and today we're going to be going over our grow lights coming up next. All right, so we're making today's video because when we were trying to set up our grow lights, we were Googling the internet, like looking in YouTube, and we couldn't find any information that was consistent. One person would be recommending one set of grow lights, then the next video would be, you know, writing about why those were terrible and why they went with these. So RJ and I were just like, we've had enough of this. <laughs> we're just going to do our own research and make our own decisions. So along with that, we had a few key aspects that we knew we were looking for, like some criteria when we were picking them out. So originally the first thing was we needed to make sure we could mount them on our shelving unit. So as you guys saw in our previous video, my shelving unit and RJ's are metal. And a lot of the grow lights require almost like a, you'd have to drill it into the ceiling or I guess it would be, I don't know where else you'd be drilling it into. Yeah, the wall. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it. Basically it'd be hard to mount it on like a wire shelving. And then we wanted to make sure that the, um, they had the right color spectrum. So these are all details RJ's going to go over shortly here. Yeah, I'll go more over the nerdy stuff. The tech right. descriptions. We had to make sure, so I was kind of like looking at different light sizes and some were two feet long, some were four feet long, but we wanted to make sure that we just made it as simple as possible. So I'm like, all right, let's make sure we buy four feet long bulbs. That way I can just mount them and I don't have to mess around doing two sets per shelf. And then we also obviously wanted to make sure they were energy efficient because we're gonna be running these things all day long and I'm not that rich, I can't be affording, you know thousand dollar energy bill. <laughs> so I'll go over all the nerdy technical aspects of the bulbs themselves because it, as you guys know I'm the tech geek here. In our search as Alex just covered we found information all over the interwebs right we have people that are talking about the light bulbs fluorescent is better than LED or LED is better than fluorescent or they'll say that the light bulbs themselves have to be close to the microgreens so that it gets the warmth of the mic of the light. Yeah. And then you'll see very confusing. Very confusing, and you'll see people talk about um, the light spectrums, and you'll see even in mine and Alex's search, we saw all these new gimmicky purple yeah. lights, uh, purple and yeah, red. Yeah. If you go to Lowe's <laughs> or Home Depot, they have them. They almost look like they belong in a club or a bar. In a club or a bar, they're yeah. like, they're just like black lights almost and whether or not they work we yeah. don't i really don't know they might work great they might work great <laughs> yeah. all i know is that they charge an arm and a leg for them yeah. because they're specialized growing lights and in our search we consolidated all this information it's like stacks of information and we made our own decision based off of the information that we read and this is the information we're about to give you guys okay so if you guys are looking into starting your own microgreen business or just growing for yourselves and you're wondering which lights to choose you have come to the right place yeah. <laughs> just to clarify real quick arjun and i did buy two different types of lights so mm -hmm. he's going to go over both but yeah. just so you guys know we are not using the same grow lights currently yeah exactly alex is using leds and i'm using fluorescent bulbs all right and there's really no difference between those two and I'll tell and I'll go to more into it a little later but the difference here between LEDs and fluorescents is LEDs are more energy efficient so Alex is saving herself dollar dollar bills Point and, one. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just I you know the initial reason for this is we wanted to try which bulbs really work and yeah. with, with Alex and myself having two different houses we have the ability to kind of play around with um, more gear and see which one works best so Alex has LEDs, I have fluorescence, and there's really no difference there, other than the fact that the LEDs are more energy efficient. The next part about this is if you're doing your research and you're looking at microgreen grow lights and you're typing that in your Google search bar, you'll notice that in all these lights, they'll have a K unit measurement. And what the heck is K, Alex? Yes. I, I don't know, that's why I've ever Googled these. So I was like, RJ, what the heck is this? I just assume if I don't know it, RJ, can, RJ knows it. Yeah, so the K stands for Kelvin, all right? And a lot of people are like, isn't that the chemistry for temperature? That's correct. So I'm, we're actually just gonna read. I'm gonna read what the K stands for. That way we're not misinterpreting any words. So the color temperature is a way to describe the light appearance provided by a light bulb. It is measured in degrees of Kelvin on a scale from 1,000 to 10,000. All right, and then if you guys do your Google searches, you'll notice that um, 2,000 to 3,000 is your warm white, and then anywhere between 3,100 to 4,500 is your cool white, and then 4,600 to 6,500 is your daylight. 
So what does all that mean? Which one is the correct one for microgreens? Yeah. The correct one for microgreens is 4600 to 6500. That is the consistency that you will see all across the internet out of all the BS that we were talking about. That is yeah. one consistent thing you'll see everyone talking about is anywhere between 46 to 6500, which represents daylight. And that is what you want so that your microgreens can go through their photosynthesis stage. Yeah. And what is photosynthesis? I'm just going to read that also. So photosynthesis is a process used by plants and other organisms to convert light energy into chemical energy. That's all it's doing. It doesn't have anything to do with how close the sun yeah. is, how close your, your microgreens are to the light. It has nothing to do with that. All it cares about is converting the light energy it's receiving so that it can do its photosynthesis stage and start um, converting it into chemical energy and doing its thing. Right? Yeah. I think my lights are about a foot, would you say, away from the microgreens? Yeah, a foot and, and a foot and some change. Yeah, and everything I read online was like, oh no, they need to be eight inches and these need to be 12 inches. And I was like, who has time to go back and <laughs> forth with this? But RJ's 100% correct here. I've had no problems, and I don't think you have either, growing our greens. They've grown fantastically. Yeah. Yeah, and we've already been growing them, and yeah. if you guys have been paying attention to our stuff, yep. we've already landed um, two clients, so we're already growing for them, and they've been growing fine, and they're not close to the lights at all, yeah. right? The only thing they care about is whether or not it is the correct color spectrum, and that is your range between 46 to 65. Alex has yep. 65. Mine are 65. And yep. mine are 65 as well. That's all. And she's using LED. I'm using fluorescent. They're not eight inches or a couple inches above the microgreens. They're about a foot high. Okay, so, and they're still doing fine. That's all it really cares about. And just to give you guys the price range, I bought my, so I have eight uh, LED bulbs, 65K for, I think it was $55 is what I paid on Amazon. For all of them. Yeah, for all of them. And it did come with these mounting things to screw in, but I, I just use zip ties to hang them up on the shelves because they don't get hot. I left them on for 12 hours and I touched the bulb. It's not even warm. So maybe that's a slight fire hazard, but for right now it's <laughs> working out okay. And um, I mean, it's been, I probably put in total for my lights paid maybe $56 if you count the zip ties that I'm using. So you can do it really affordably. Absolutely. The last bit we just want to throw your way is if you don't decide to go with LEDs and you go with fluorescent light bulbs mm -hmm. because I chose fluorescent, you'll find that there's another number associated to it. And that's the T. You'll see T12, T8, T5. And all that really represents is the diameter of the bulb. So the higher the number, the thicker the bulb. So T12s, they're pretty thick. Uh, T8s, people, I've seen people go with T8s on their, on their grow lights. I have T5s, so they're pretty thin. As technology progresses, things get smaller and smaller, but before, T5s, because they were so thin, it couldn't output as much uh, Kelvin units. It, I think the limit back then was 4600, which is just fine. But they created a newer technology of T5s, which is the HO, which is high output. So now you have these super thin T5 tubes that is producing 6500K uh, spectrums of light, okay? So that's all that T stands for, is just the thickness. As long as, it doesn't matter how thick you want it, just as long as it's hitting the correct color right. spectrum. That's all. So hopefully you guys found that useful. Uh, if you guys, like I said, like you know, we were talking about, if you guys are thinking about growing microgreens, you will need a light source, whether that's just, I, I've seen other people just grow off their counters, right? They just have one tray. You'll yeah. still need light. <laughs> and hopefully this helped um, if you go LED or fluorescent. Just know that all the gimmicky stuff, you don't need that. All you need is the right color spectrum. So as long as it's hitting uh, 4600 to 65K, you're good, you're golden. Yep. It doesn't matter what, if it's fluorescent, it doesn't matter if it's LED, it doesn't matter if it's an inch off of it or if it's a foot off of it. As long as the plant has the correct daylight to do its thing. Yep. We hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. And as always, Alex and I are trying to build a community of like minds, so we would absolutely love it if you guys hit that like and subscribe button so you guys get the latest on our urban farming adventure, and we will see you guys next time.